Welcome to the show. Today I'm going to talk about the odd coupling of Kenny G and Kanye. If you have any thoughts on any musicians you'd like to hear about, let me know in the comments below and we'll try to make it happen. Kenny G is a saxophonist and a damn good one. He's one of the best selling artists of all time and has even performed at the White House. He was invited to perform, yep, invited to perform with Barry White at just 17 with the Love Unlimited Orchestra. In 1982, he inked his first record deal, but in 1986, he found insane success with the release of his fourth album, Geotones. He's 63, and as of this year, he's on Kanye's Jesus is King. Some jazz musicians dislike Kenny because they feel he's not that advanced of a player and he has limited harmonic and melodic range. Even if that was true though, does that really matter when you're that successful? And more importantly, what did Kanye see in him? You see, Kanye actually invited Kenny to come perform as a surprise for Kim on Valentine's Day. Kenny was touched because not only does he respect Kanye, he actually enjoyed the basic aspect of giving joy to people through music. How sweet. Later, Kenny was in Kanye's waiting room and hadn't met him yet. He'd never met him. You're probably thinking, oh, which version of Kanye is gonna come down the stairs? Because any version could come down. Crazy Kanye, normal Kanye, happy Kanye, any of them. Kanye came down the stairs eventually and gave him a big hug. Kenny said, there's nothing but positive energy coming out of that guy. And that's really fun to be around, to be honest. Kanye decided to serenade Kim in a room full of roses with Kenny G right in the middle. Kenny stated this room was brilliant. It gave his music a cathedral reverb, supposedly. And then, predictably, they both went to the studio later, where Kanye showed him some music, probably of Jesus is King and unreleased Yandy samples. Kenny suddenly said, stop, during one of the tracks. He said, you know, I think if my saxophone was on here, it would sound really good. Kanye went cool, got the microphone and let Kenny record. There was no back and forth supposedly. And to me, that shows there's a massive level of mutual respect between the two. Kenny then took the song home, worked on it some more and then sent it back to Kanye. Even I was thinking, wow, Kanye actually let someone take his music away from the studio and work on it. He stated that the reason he singled out the track is because of instinct and the way he can relate to things. To be honest, I'm not surprised because Kenny G has worked with people like Barbara Streisand, Frank Sinatra and Andrea Bocelli. These people usually had songs ready for him. Kanye was the opposite. He brought him in as a friend. They relaxed, listened to music and things just happened naturally as they should. And I think that's a great lesson for anyone. I think it's important because an organic writing process or creative process sort of delves back into our human nature. We like company and we like pushing each other up. And that in my eyes is something that definitely should be encouraged more and is definitely the surprising lesson from this story.